Good morning to you all, and a very warm welcome to this, our service of worship here in First Church Belfast. We especially welcome Sarah Richmond, who's be, who will be singing for us today, and we welcome those people who are joining with us online. Uh, just one announcement is that we will begin to sing hymns again in church, starting from, from today. Now, the only caveat is that we must be seated and we must be masked while we're doing it. Other than that, uh, we can begin uh, to sing hymns once again in church. Now, I'm sure over time this will change and that we, begin to, we will be allowed to stand and sing on masks. But at the minute, uh, these are the conditions that we must operate uh, under. We are God's people. Come from many places to this dear place. We come as we are, bringing with us memories and longings, disappointments and achievements, doubt and faith. Let us offer all these to God, who is our peace and our strength. We join together in prayer. God, who is love, before time, beyond time, you are the ground of reality. Everything belongs to you. All things are intended to express love, for your whole being is love. God, who is life, on earth and beyond earth, you are the source of meaning. In darkness and death, you are a light. In doubt and despair, you are a friend. Your whole being is life. God, who is truth, in words and beyond words, you are the fountain of hope. Justice and peace are your promise. Faith and love are your way. Your whole being is truth. Glorious and gracious God, you are with us and call us into your presence. We lift our hearts in response to your love. We raise our songs in praise of your goodness. We offer our adoration in response to your holiness. Summon us, voice of God, with words of challenge and power, ch calling us to courageous discipleship and urgent witness. Speak to us, breath of God, with forgiveness for the many occasions we have hidden behind weakness, belittling your power and denying your presence. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught when he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We begin by singing hymn number one.
Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be removed. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered, and his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. <coughs> Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you to Marion and to Sarah and to Richard for being part of our service here this morning. Before we have our second reading, just I forgot to announce that next week is a service of Holy Communion here in First Church. So please, if you can join with us in the church building or online, you'll be uh, very welcome indeed. Our second reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 17, reading verses 6 to 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them in your name that you, have, that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Amen. A man is praying in church. He looks up to heaven and he says, God, could you answer a question for me? Of course, my son, says God, what would you like to know? God, what is a million years to you? Well, says God, a million years to me is as a second. Hmm, says the man, I suppose I understand that. So what is a million pounds to you then? My son, God says, a million pounds to me is as a penny. Hmm, says the man. He goes back to praying, but after a little while he looks up again. God, he asks, can I have a penny? Absolutely, God says. Just give me a second. <laughs> Prayer is a funny thing. A book that I bought years ago in a second-hand bookshop was a book of prayers written by Paul Davis, who served as minister of All Souls Church in Washington in the late 1940s and early 1950s. And the reason I like this book is not so much for the prayers contained within its covers. Indeed, many of them are written in sort of oldy, worldly language and have thought patterns of times which I now find difficult to own. But I liked it because of what he says about prayer. Let me quote just a few lines which express his thoughts on prayer. He said, prayer is the language of the heart, akin to poetry. Its concern is not with exact description as that, of, as that of prose so often is, but with reality itself and with the power to evoke our spiritual resources. Prayer goes, goes where other language leaves off. It has to do with what is least known and yet most deeply felt. In all my thinking about and struggling with prayer, those words of Paul Davis from his book, The Language of the Heart, have always struck a chord with me. Under the strain of difficult conditions, 
or in severe loss or bereavement, or when emotionally moved by a scene of natural beauty, there is something within us that cries out for expression. And this is natural to us. This is the beginning of prayer. God or the sacred found in the midst of ordinary life and in the natural world and understood as something more than ourselves in which we live and move and have our being and which in various ways calls us and the world on the edge of time to move beyond present states of existence. Today's story by John is a very small part of the tradition which was circulating about Jesus' prayers or his prayer life. And the tone of this rather long prayer is very personal. In it, he addresses God as someone whom he knows very intimately, as indeed somebody he trusts implicitly. And it is classical theism. And in this prayer, John, uh, prayer, John has Jesus weaving together the past and the present and the future. And he weaves it into a kind of timelessness, which he suggests is available for all. This particular prayer is quite different from the Lord's Prayer, which we use every week here in church, which I suppose shows that there are many different types of prayer and many different approaches to prayer. So in spite of some advice to the contrary, there is no one way which is either right or wrong. Prayer which somebody leads in church on behalf of other people is quite different from prayer, a private prayer in, in a person's house. On the other hand, prayer may be just a couple of words or even a waiting in silence. Whatever the sort of prayer you prefer, there, doesn't need, there does need to be a time for silence. The deeper you get into prayer, the more it tends to be a listening prayer rather than a speaking prayer. That silence may, uh, may be when you're outside, that silence, sorry, may be when you're outside gardening or enjoying a sea view or looking at a picture or out for a brisk morning walk. It may also be while you're ironing or painting the shed or washing the car. Or it may be in deliberate meditation. Elder Camara, a Catholic bishop of Brazil, has become an inspirational figure for many people around the world. He died around 22 years ago, but his work of solidarity on behalf of the poor and the exploited will long be remembered. And he once wrote some words on prayer to the people of his diocese at a time when they were enduring horrific suffering. And how does he say it? He talks of putting our ear to the ground in order to hear the divine voice, to recognize that God is always by our side, even when in our agony we are silenced and unable to think at all. This is his prayer. Put your ear to the ground and listen. Hurried, worried footsteps. Bitterness, rebellion. Hope hasn't yet begun. Listen again. Put out your feelers. The Lord is there. Peter Miller from the Iona community offers this perspective on Kamara's prayer. He says, is this not the essence of prayer? To see the one who is always near and who is constantly inviting us in gentle compassion to come back to our inheritance as a human being made in the divine image. Another perspective on prayer, especially how it works, comes from Christine Robinson. She suggests this, that prayer works on our own hearts, calming us enough to hear our own wisdom, to reroute habits and habitual responses, to help us adjust and to find good in all that we, can, we cannot change and see the light in each person, no matter how difficult they are in our lives. 
prayer works not because of a so-called all-powerful supernatural being who just happens to be listening, waiting for our orders. It works because our lives and our world are porous to new and creative, reimagined possibilities. As Henry Nelson Vyman said, prayer works in the recreation of the one who prays. Now, all this has been words on prayer, but words on prayer should also share in a prayer. And Pyle Davis has just such a prayer, a short prayer about prayer. Indeed, a short, soft, theistic prayer, which addresses the sacred or the divine in a personal way. This is his prayer. Help us, O God, lest we make our prayers a substitute for what we should do with our lives. What our prayers begin, may our lives continue. I conclude my sermon with these words from Henry Nelson Vyman. He said, religion with wisdom born of centuries of experience, tells us that qualities of mind and heart, rather than physical blessings, should be a major concern in our prayer life. That we should pray not for more of the bounties of life, but for more awareness of life. Not for more recognition and love from our peers, but more for capacity to give love and recognition. These are some of the things which are truly worth praying for, and they are all within the range of possibility for each one of us. Amen. We sing hymn 268, Just As I Am.
Again, we join together in prayer. Disturb us, O God, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dreamed too little, because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, O God, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the water of life. When, having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity, and in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. Stir us, O God, to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas where storms show thy mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invited the brave to follow, O God, you have warned us that you will require much of those to whom much is given. Grant that we who have so great a heritage may strive together more abundantly to extend to others what we so richly enjoy. As we have supported the labours of others by working with them, in their turn others may support us in our work to the fulfilment of your holy will. And in the silence we offer up our own prayers for those who are in need. And today especially we remember the situation in Israel. We remember the people who are suffering. We remember the loss of life, the pointlessness of violence. And we pray for hope for the future. O oh God, hear these, our prayers. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 326, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah.
And may the God in whose image we are made strengthen us in our struggle and embrace us in our weakness and inspire us with hope for a different future as we work separately and together for the freedom of the whole of creation. Amen.